Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, my obeisances. Where is the Shri Prabhupada? Hare Krishna, Jai Ho. Maharaj Hare Krishna Maharaj. My humble, my humblest obeisance is at your Lord Sri Krishna. Are you going to start? Uh, Hans Ting is in Iskand Farmington Hills. Yes, this is a temple hall and the devotees are sitting in the back. So we are trying to mirror your program on the TV so that you have that stage. Yay. Is it too early for everyone? Yes, Maharaj. Actually, you know, usually our Bhagavatam class is at 8.15. I think in order to accommodate your timings. Yeah. Um, I can't do it any other time. It's already 1.15 my time. Yes, Maharaj. Any later, any later will throw my whole afternoon off. Uh, yes, sir, I agree. Thank you. I don't know to... Okay. Uh, ready to go whenever you are. Yes, sir, you can start. Please start. You need the verse. <laughs> Shamkishur, I, I sent to the Mataji already like you know, three days ago. Yeah, we have to put it on the screen now, right? Yeah, one minute. Hey, Projis. Just, for just a moment, I'm putting on the screen. Yeah, okay, put it on the screen. Yes. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, 18th chapter, verse number 21 The battle between Lord Bor and Haranyaksha Asanu samvidam apitad savasam vitam prakritkaram aharyam vikraman tilakshadaityam bhagavan sarashanir jagada narayanam arisukkar sukkaram Translation After arriving at the place of combat, Brahma, the leader of thousands of sages and transcendentalists, saw the demon who had attained such unprecedented power that no one could fight with him. Brahma then addressed Narayan, who was assuming the form of a boar for the first time. Rama Uvacha, Aisite Deva Devanham, Agrimulam Upeyasam, Vipranam Sarabehinam, Utanam Apyangasam, Agaskrit Vayam Krit Duskrit, Aswam Radha Varo Suraha, Andrisan Apriti Rato. Lokam Atatikantaka. Translation. 
Lord Brahma said, my dear Lord, this demon has proved to be a constant print trick to the demigods, the brahmanas, the cows and innocent persons who were spotless and always dependent on worship your lotus feet. He has become a source of fear by unnecessarily harassing them. Since he has attacked a boon from me, he has become a demon, always searching for a proper combatant, combatant wandering all of the universe for, for this infamous purpose. Peter Prabhupada's purport. There are two classes of living entities. One is called Sura, or the demigods, and the other called is Asura, or the demons. Demons are generally fond of worshiping the demigods, and there are evidence that by such worship they get extensive power for their sense gratification. This pro later proves to be trouble, cause of trouble to the brahmanas, demigods, and other innocent living entities. Demons habitually find fault with the demigods, brahmins, and innocent, to whom they are a constant source of fear. The way of the demon is to take power from the demigods and then tease the demigods themselves. There is an instant of a great devotee of Lord Shiva who obtained a boon from Lord Shiva, that the head of whoever he touched with his hand would come off its trunk. As soon as the boon was offered to him, the demon wanted to touch the very head of Lord Shiva. That is their way. The devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead do not, however, ask for any favor from sense gratification. They, even if they are offered liberation, they refuse it. They are happy simply engaging in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Namaste Saraswati Devi, Vani Pracharile, Mirvisesa Sunyavadi, Pastyatya De Satarine. Vancha kalpa turu vischa vipa sindhu ve vicha patita nam avane bio vaishnave bio namaha namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Bhor Bhakta Rindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Rama So both the demons and the devotees, or uh, demons and the pious, of course, worship the demigods because the demigods are aligned with satisfying material desires when they are accepting worship according to the rules and regulations of that of a particular worship. We see how Hiranyakashipu worshiped Lord Brahma. Uh, Ravana worship Lord Shiva. Here we have an example of um, Vikrasura who worshiped Lord Shiva. Um, it seems like the demigods don't know what they're doing <laughs> because it turns around that they use these uh, powers that they receive from the demigods against the demigods. It's mentioned here also. So, um, but the demigods have been placed to satisfy material desires by a particular type of worship. So anyone who takes up that worship, if they fulfill the austerities of performing those rituals accordingly, and the demons, they are very intelligent. This is one of the features of the demons, they have good intelligence. What is that intelligence? They have intelligence in order to exploit. Their intelligence is called duskritina, that means it's meant to cause difficult to, to, to other living entities for their own selfish interests. They are greedy, they are lusty, they are full of anger, 
and they're always envious of all the living entities. <laughs> this is the nature of the demons. And somehow or other, they receive power through various types of worship. Here, even Brahma admits that um, he gave a boon to this demon. And now this demon is a source of constant harassment for the Brahmanas, the cows, the demigods, and other innocent living entities. So this is the demons. Uh, they are very ungrateful and they'll get whatever they can in order to fulfill their desires. The scriptures explain clearly that there are two classes of men, as it's mentioned here. There are the Asuras and Suras. The demons want to take the property of the Lord for their own selfish interests and control and exploit others in the same way. And the, de the devotees, they want to use the property of the Lord for the service of the Lord in devotion. And so these two classes of persons eternally exist as long as there is the material energy. And we have to make that clear that these, it's not that when we read the Bhagavatam, we're reading about something that has, is not happening now. It's happening right now, right in front of our eyes. There are two classes of men, the demons and the demigods, and that's why there are so many problems in the world. Prabhupada makes a nice statement. He says, for the devotees, Maya is our friend. We don't have any problem with Maya because Maya works to help the devotees become Krishna conscious. But because there are demons, there are so much troubles in the world. <laughs> and there's always wars, pestilence, various types of problems everywhere influenced by demoniac power. And what we have today in today's present situation in the world, the demons have great amounts of control of their natural resources and the powers that be throughout the world. They are very powerful. Prabhupada was talking about these persons. He said one time that there are seven man-eating rakshasas that are ruling the world. When the devotees said, well, maybe we should try to reach them and destroy them, Prabhupada said, there's no way. They're, they're too powerful. Don't try. <laughs> And so this situation is there. In 1972, there is one lecture Prabhupada talks in this Bhagavatam class. He says, and the demons are only increasing and they will continue to increase as time goes on. And that was in 1972. So here we are 50 years later and we're seeing how there is so much trouble and turmoil in the world, almost lying, cheating, by people who are in power because they're influenced by demoniac principles or they're actually uh, uh, working in cooperation with demoniac personalities. So the world's in a pretty bad state than it is now and it'll only get worse as Prabhupada says because the demons are only increasing. But then he gave the example of Prahlad Maharaj. He gave the example of Devaki. Prahlad Maharaj, his father, was the king of the demons, the Surya Bhajya. He was not only the, the king of the demons, he was the best of all demons at the same time. He had such power that he was ruling even the heavenly realms. He had dethroned all of the demigods, including Indra. He was using the throne of Indra as his own throne. And he had subject, subjugated all the demigods to become his servants. All except Brahma, Shiva, and Narada. They were the only ones that were not cooperating with, because they were powerful enough to avoid the influence of Narani Kashi. But he was very, very powerful. And here we have the example of his brother here, Haranyaksha, 
who was no less powerful than his brother, but acted in a different way. He was always trying to get as much gold as he could from the earth. And he did it in such a way that he took so much gold that it destroyed the natural balance of the earth. And therefore, you have what happened was the earth fell from its orbit into the Garbodak Ocean, which calls the demigods to petition Lord Brahma, and Brahma petitioned and meditated. And he meditated in such a way that in his meditation on the Lord, the Lord appeared in a little tiny dwarf form as a, as a boar from his own nostril, and then grew as big as the sky. So by the arrangement of Brahma, through the petition of the demigods, the Lord appeared in order to take care of this demon. So you might say, well, how, how do we stop the demoniac influence now? And that's a good question. And Prabhupada said, chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is very powerful. And as long as we take full shelter of the holy name, there is nothing in the material energy that can harm one or influence one. The holy name is antiseptic, purifying, prophylactic, protective, and completely Krishna himself in transcendental sound. So this is the Kali Kale, Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar, Nama Haite Hoya Sarva Jagat Mistura. That in this present age, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the incarnation in this age, but he has brought with him Sri Krishna himself, who is non different than him, in the form of his holy name, as the means for purifying the individual heart and ultimately the entire world. So, this chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, Maha Mantra cannot be. Uh, overestimated and how powerful it is and how protective it is against demonic influences. And therefore, Prabhupada said, Prahlad Maharaj and Devaki, both of them were threatened by big demons. Devaki with Kamsa, as she was in prison in his jail cell and forced to give every one of her babies to Kamsa so he could destroy that baby, thinking that it may be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So as a mother, she had to go through so much distress <laughs> watching her own children being killed by her own brother. <laughs> so this was just, you can imagine, but she was protected by the Lord because she took full shelter of the Lord by praying to the Lord. And so we see, as we mentioned earlier, that the uh, the demoniac influence of Hiranyaksha was uh, creating an imbalance in the world. And today we see the same thing. The demons are drilling into the earth for oil, for natural gas, for various types of metals and stuff. And of course, simply by the sinful activities of people in general, the earth is going through some tremendous difficulties. Therefore, there are so many natural disasters happening all around the world. And there is floods, there are forest fires, there is various types of calamities, there's shortages. And of course, the latest thing is this coronavirus, which is, an, which is a reaction for the sinful activities of the living entities and the presence of demons in such profuse numbers. So um, uh, Bhagavatam is not something that we have, we read about some history and now it's different. <laughs> we are living in Bhagavatam right every moment. And therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come with the mercy in this age to push back the demoniac influence in such a way that it will overshadow everything and bring in, as it's predicted, the golden age. But before that golden age actually starts to profusely uh, rain, there has to be a few more things in place. And that is the Lord's plan 
the bringing about um, you know, what we say his movement into the world. And so we are in a pretty dark time where the demons are everywhere. <laughs> They're influencing all forms of society and people are being harassed in so many times. Prabhupada says, as Kali Yuga goes on, the governments will become more oppressive and they, it is called Durviksha. Durviksha means that they will continue to harass the citizens by placing more and more restrictions and more and more taxes, tariffs, reasons for getting your money in various types of services, taxes, tariffs, you name it. Prabhupada goes on to explain that this will continue as Kali Yuga continues and people will become so harassed that they, they'll give up their hearth and home and go to the forest in order to live free from the influence of demoniac rule. So this is Kali Yuga and there, but as it says, um, uh, Kali, what is it, that one verse? Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalom, Kalon Naste, Naste, Eva Naste, Eva, Gatir Anyata. This is the powerful bright light in this age of Kali to push back. So devotees should come together as much as possible and have kirtan, chant their japa, and chant and, and, and arrange more and more programs for chanting, for dancing for distributing prasadam, and for having satsang and discussing the glories of the Lord. These things are on the transcendental platform. They are not within the three modes of material energy. They're fully blessed by the Lord themselves, and they give uh, knowledge. They awaken uh, one's devotion to the Lord, and they free themselves from all the effects of the material energy. Kalir dosha nidi rajan asti eko mahagun kirtana eva krishna sya mukta sangam param vajat. This verse is spoken by Srila Sukadev Goswami and to King Nimi, and he's saying, no, actually to Maharaj Parikshit, he's saying, in this age of Kali, there are so many faults. Kalo dear dosha nidi, ocean of faults. But there's one boon, one bright light, and that is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But the problem is we don't take enough time, or do we, do we see the importance of chanting Hare Krishna? And that's our problem. We just somehow or other do our 16 rounds, maybe. And when we put the, then when we're done, we put the beads on the hook and we say, we'll see you tomorrow. And then we go on. Or whatever else we're doing. But it's not like that. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, chant always. Kirtana, satatam kirtayantamam yatantasta dudavgataha, yatantasta dudavgataha, muktasanga, I lost that last line. It's in the Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna explains that this chanting should go on continuously. And that is the feature of this age. And this is the only shelter in this age of Kali, is chanting of the holy names, hearing and discussing Srimad Bhagavatam, associating with devotees, taking Krishna Prashadam, and uh, performing all the, the activities as given by Srila Prabhupada and as by, has been blessed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates. So uh, here we're reading about how, how powerful these demons are. In this age, of course, where we are in the present days, the demons are not even slightly as powerful as they were in the days we're reading about it from the Srimad Bhagavatam. But in today's demoniac society, they are very tricky and very intelligent in exploiting people for everything people have. So that is their demoniac influence. They are just greedy to get more and more and more. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, 
he actually paraphrases the words of the demons. He says, so much wealth do I have today and so much more will be mine in the future. Uh, he is my enemy and I have killed him and my other enemy will also be killed. I am surrounded by aristocratic relatives. I am perfect, I am powerful, I am happy and I shall give in charity and thus I shall rejoice. <laughs> Well, Krishna speaks how the demons think and what is their plans for exploiting the world. So it's all there. <laughs> and uh, this is so when we when we understand what is happening and why it's, it's happening, then we can understand how important it is that Krishna, because Prabhupada said, this Krishna consciousness movement is the only solution to the problems of the world. Every other attempts to ameliorate the sufferings in this world end up with another form of problems. As Prahlad Maharaj says, when you apply material solutions to material problems, the material solutions are more problematic than the problems themselves. And there's so many examples of this. I won't get into any detail about that, but this is the actual situation. So, uh, therefore, uh, study this particular verse and we can get an understanding how the demons work in such a way as to take advantage of persons who give them benedictions and then they become powerful and then they exploit. And as Srila Prabhupada said, and he said it with such emphasis. He says, the demons will do anything. They will do anything. And we have so many examples. Rani Kasipu tried to kill his own son. <laughs> we have the example of Aranzeb, who imprisoned his own father. And so they don't even have regard to their own family members or even friends. When a demon wants to fulfill his own greedy and lusty desires, no one can stand in their way. This is their program. But the devotees are free from the influence of such personalities, and they also have the solution to ameliorate the problems in the world, and that is to spread the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra everywhere. And as Prabhupada said, we should also build our farm communities, develop simple living, agriculture, cow protection. He said, in that way, we can live a lifestyle which is conducive to Krishna consciousness, have time for worship, and be able to live a healthy and, what we say, uh, satisfying life. Alpha said, these cities, they won't last they'll soon they will become destroyed in time because it's a place of economic development and sense gratification. It is doomed simply by its, per, by its progress. And, but therefore Parpa said, establish these farms. So here, these two things, the chanting of the holy name and developing a lifestyle which is simplified, free from the influence of the materialistic society, is Prabhupada's plan for the future. Prabhupada was a not simply a philosopher in spiritual knowledge, he was a prophet, foreseer, he knew economy, he knew politics, he knew all of the different sciences that people are adverse uh, 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 who are versed to in this world, Prabhupada knew how the world would unfold seeing the present situation. And therefore, he gave us the formula, develop these communities, and spread the holy name everywhere. Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Okay, so, and therefore, these demons. Aranyaksha, Aranyakashipu, uh, Shishupal, and all their descendants who are now the present day demons are insignificant in the face of the power of the devotees who take full shelter 
of the holy name of the Lord and worship the Lord in devotion. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Rivo, Rivo. Maharaj, do you have time for some questions, Maharaj? Of course, I have about a half hour. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Maharaj. Such a wonderful class. Um, dear devotees, if you have any questions, you may press the raise hand button or you can turn on your video and you can ask your questions. Sukhavaha Mataji, do you have a question? All right. Hare Krishna, thank you. No. Any other devotees? I'll ask a question, Prabhu. Please proceed. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Raj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all of the Vaishnavas. In, in I actually have two questions, but I don't know if I have time to ask, if you have time for me to ask two. The first one was in the first line of the purport, it said there are two classes of living entities. One is called Sura or the demigods, and the other is called Asura or the demons, which leaves me puzzles at to where do humans fit in and other other animals on this planet? Well, there are people who are influenced by one side or the other. The demoniac characteristics and qualities, although a person may not be a demon, they are influenced by their these certain characteristics such as Greed, exploitation, envy. These are all demoniac uh, characteristics. Uh, compassion, charity, uh, kindness towards other living entities, tolerance, humility. These are qualities that are, that are of the godly nature. And they're also spread in some form or another within the human population. So the qualities are divided. And if you just read the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, you'll see the first three verses describe the uh, saintly qualities, or we might say the qualities of the devotees. And the rest of the chapter describes the demoniac qualities. So wherever you see those demoniac qualities, it means that people are influenced by them. But then when those who have all of these demoniac qualities in profuse quantity, then you can understand that's a demon. <laughs> but a demon is a person who actively works to harm, cause harm, and exploitation to others. And so there are planets around the earth that are inhabited by godly people, and there are planets around the earth that are inhabited by demons also. So Below the earth, there are demoniac planets and where people take birth in demoniac species of life. The Bhagavatam describes a whole list. And we have the list of the devas and their offshoots. It's like Kanaras, Siddhas, Charanas. Um, there's a whole list of saintly persons who are what we call not demigods, but they're semi semi demigods. They are above the humans and not up to the level of demigods. 
You know, the Kanaras, the Siddhas, the Chanaras, the Gandharvas. But then you have below the earth, then you have those uh, Kuala demons who are Kusmandas, Jinns, uh, Rakshashas, uh, Yakshas. There's a whole series of planets where these different demoniac species live, as there are a whole series of planets where they're. And now many of them take birth on the earth because one takes birth according to karma. So many times when the karma of the world goes down and becomes more and more sinful, then you get more and more demons taking birth in the earth planet. And when the, when the climate of the earth becomes more pious, then more and more saintly persons coming from higher realms take birth. So the collective karma of, the, of a particular planet inspires that karma to produce more and more of the population according to the nature of that karma, like that. So Prabhupada would say, and it said in the Bhagavatam, whenever there's major natural disasters, this is an indication that demons are being born on this planet. <laughs> and that's mentioned as when Haranyaksha and Harani Kasipu to birth, the, the environmental climate became very much disturbed. <laughs> and just like you see, when Krishna takes birth on the planet, you'll see just before Krishna takes birth, everything becomes so beautiful. The trees, the flowers, the plants, the human beings, everything becomes what we say, uh, uh, reaches reaches the the mode of goodness. So that's how it works. <laughs> so you have demons and saintly persons circling the earth and coming in and out of the earth planet, taking birth and dying and going on like that. So. That's why you see, Prabhupada even says, you don't see any intelligent persons being born anymore. Years ago, you would see there were many great thinkers, philosophers, you know, people who were really intelligent. That's gone. <laughs> That's gone now because the whole climate of the earth has become more and more sinful. And so the intelligence now is those who can, who are IT experts, that's all. <laughs> that's the intelligence of today. And Prabhupada said, IT is engineering and engineering is sutra work. That's all it is. It's not for, it's not for medical work. So, you, yeah, if you study Srila Prabhupada's statements in relationship to the Bhagavatam, and along with Prabhupada's uh, commentaries, you find that it's easy to see how things are happening. It's clear, Prabhupada made everything clear. And then, but people are saying, well, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why, this, why doesn't this happen? Because they don't have that knowledge. Therefore, if you read and study Bhagavatam, along with understanding deeper Srila Prabhupada's statements, you, you'll understand how everything is happening or not happening. <laughs> Prabhupada said, if you study my books, you'll know everything. <laughs> and, and especially you'll know Krishna too. <laughs> That's the most important part of the knowledge, of course. very much Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah. So this this battle between Suras and Asuras is, is an eternal battle. It doesn't end. It continues to go on as long as there's the material world.
Thank you so much, Maharaj. Sri Devi Mahati, can you proceed with your question? Thank you, Prabhu. Please accept my humble obeisance, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your divine lotus feet, and my humble obeisance is to all the devotees. Uh, Guru Maharaj, thank you for this uh, really wonderful explanation of the holy name and these two classes of uh, living beings, Asuras and Suras. As you were speaking about the holy name and the power of the holy name, now, how demons are so intelligent and so ruthless, some thoughts came to my mind. I personally know some of my relatives, some very close people of mine who are quite, quite demoniac, to be honest. And I have encouraged them to chant the holy name. They're chanting, but they're doing nothing else. And now I'm worrying that their demoniac propensities are getting stronger because those weeds are getting watered and they are becoming more demoniac by the power of the holy name. Is that a possibility? Well, this knowledge in the hands of the wrong person will cause havoc, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the chanting of the holy name, people can approach it in order to improve their material life. They don't get any spiritual benefit like that. But you see, generally the demons, they worship Lord Shiva. And, um, you know, because Kali Bhai, Kali Bhai Ra, what is his name? Kali Bhai Rava is one of the features of Lord Shiva, who is a very fierce manifestation of Lord Shiva for worship, worship by the demons. Generally, they don't worship Krishna or chant the holy names of the Lord. Usually the holy name will not allow them to continue to chant. Mm. So mm. they chant they chant mantras to to ghosts, to spirits, to various types of lower living entities who are very powerful materially. So if they were really chanting and if they were really taking shelter of the holy names, we would see a difference in them. We would see their demoniac propensities are decreasing and they're acquiring at least some good qualities. So if that's not happening, we can conclude that either they're not chanting or they're chanting with uh, a desire to exploit material energy. Well, Krishna's name is not different than Krishna. But at the same time, if Krishna desires, then they can chant the holy name for millions of years and get no benefit from it. Krishna responds to devotion. Hmm. But the thing is, mantra chanting is powerful. So everyone will get some kind of power from, from chanting different mantras. So they're actually getting absolutely nothing from the chanting. That's they're just wasting their time. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. They, they may get some protection from the suffering and material energy, but nothing more than that. That's the that's the maximum they get. And they won't get anything else. That's because they're simply just chanting as a ritual or as a means to get some wishes or uh, personal material desires fulfilled and not it's with a, the desire to please Krishna. It's explained that when materialistic people chant from it, the holy name from the from material desires, the name just remains what it is. It's five letters, K-R-S-N-A. It's only five letters of the alphabet. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Better to give them prasadam. <laughs> right, right. 
Well, I'm too far away for that. And uh, I'm concerned about what I've done, whether I've done something good or made things worse by <laughs> encouraging them to chat. I don't know. They're not demons. They're just, they're just gross materialists. That's all. Yes, okay, we have, we have some more questions. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, this question is from Nayan Sundari Mataji. She has a question and a message. Hare Krishna, Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shla Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. Her question is, how do, you, how do we deal with the demon of false ego within us? Mm -hmm. Well, false ego means the identity that we place upon ourselves that is related to the body. So false ego is transformed by real ego. Real ego means who I am. And I am Jivar Sarupai Krishna and Nityadas. I'm eternally servant of Krishna. Any other label or designation I may apply to myself is a hunkara of false ego. It has nothing to do with me. It's just related to the body or to the extensions of the body. Therefore, we should not identify with these things as ourselves, we should identify who we are. We are eternal servants of the Lord. And therefore, being eternal servants of the Lord, we serve the Lord. And when we serve the Lord, we develop uh, our relationship with the Lord, which overshadows these negative. But false ego is very subtle. It's very hard to even detect this false ego, what to speak of rhythm and stuff with false ego. Therefore, through transcendental knowledge, we have to understand that anything in this material world is imposed upon me due to my due to having a material body. That's all. And I am not this body, I am not the mind either. And not neither any of these things. So why identify with them? We identify with who we really are. And therefore, identity inspires us to act on the, on the material level. Because of material identity, we act in that way. On the spiritual level, because of material spiritual identity, we serve Krishna. We serve the devotees of the Lord. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, um, Sham Kishore Prabhu has a question. Sham Kishore Prabhu ji, please proceed. Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet. All of you are proud of um, You mentioned so nicely about uh, constant chanting of the holy name. Uh, so um, personally, I feel that uh, uh, the mind is such a demon that uh, I mean, even though we engage in service of of Krishna, whatever is, mind will give some practical reasons why we cannot chant because we have to take care of this, take care of that, and then and then just forget chanting. So how do how can I constantly schedule it? Schedule. Have a time for chanting, and that's all you do at that time. When you get up in the morning, don't check your messages that were there overnight. <laughs> Just keep your phone off and chant the holy names, finish your rounds, and then go on with your business after that. If you don't schedule the time for chanting of the holy name, the mind will jump in and give you so many ideas of what you should be doing. That's why Krishna says only by regulating, when you regulate your activities, then you can conquer over this demon of lust. So we have to be regulated, especially in our spiritual practice. Regulation means this is the time for chanting. There's no other time. I chant now, I, I put everything else aside. This is a time for reading. I put everything else aside. This is a time for worship. I put everything else aside. 
And when you're doing your material activities, you do them accordingly. So if you don't live a regular, you don't strive for a regulated life, and then the mind will just um, tell you what to do at any time. <laughs> Regulation has to be there, especially when it comes to sadhana. That's the easily, easy and most effective formula for conquering over the mind is regulation. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Maharaj, this question is from Achita Gopal Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Maharaj, you said Maya helps devotees and troubles demons. So as a neophyte, having more demoniac nature, would Maya help me or trouble me in this process? Well, what I said was, my Prabhupada said Maya is our friend. And she works to purify the devotee to bring him to Krishna consciousness. But because there are demons in the world, Maya has to serve the demons. And therefore, there are so many problems. Not because of Maya, but because Maya serves the demons and therefore she facilitates their desires. Yeah. So... Your question is related to you. What did you say in relationship to yourself? Maharaj, um, he actually mentioned that, um, mentioned Maya helps devotees and troubles demons. So as a neophyte, having more demoniac nature, would Maya help me or trouble me in this process? Well, she doesn't necessarily trouble the demons. She gives them what they want. And of course, the trouble they, they undergo is the results of acting in a material way. That's their trouble. But for your own self, just, um, I just take shelter of Krishna. What else can you do? <laughs> If, if you're getting troubled by the demons or by Maya, just take shelter of Krishna. Both of them, both the demons and Maya, uh, are seen by a devotee as an impetus to, to become more Krishna conscious. That's Some of the more, most Krishna conscious people in the world are people who are undergoing to the difficulties in their life because they understand there's no other place to go but the lotus feet of the Lord when they experience these difficulties. So don't concern yourself so much about what's happening. Just take shelter of Krishna. That's all. <laughs> He'll protect you. He'll purify you. He'll clarify your vision so you can know how to act properly. Our shelter is Krishna. Remember Krishna, chant his holy name. Pray to Krishna, glorify Krishna by worshiping Krishna. This is the formula. Okay, the Sringalila had a question in the chat. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go with that one. Uh, yes, Maharaj, sure. Maharaj, I have heard that in Yoga Sutras, it is mentioned that whenever one starts meditation or chanting, for example, at that time, both material and spiritual impressions come up. That which is stronger and will influence our practice. How to use that statement to improve our sadhana? Well, that's true. And the idea is when you start performing a spiritual process, you're putting the ghee on the fire and the impurities are also coming to the surface. So one has to keep one's mind fixed in a very determined way on the spiritual process. 
and simply ignore these appearances of the negative thoughts, desires that may appear during these practices. Because they're coming to the surface because um, you're getting purified. And rather than being internalized, they're now becoming uprooted. But from our position, in order for us to uh, stay free from the influence of that, we have to become determined to keep our attention on the holy name, on the meditation, on the prayer. You know, you're bothered by a certain thought, and you just don't give that thought any, any attention. That's all. No attention. And you put your attention on Krishna and on devotional activities. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Maharaj, would you have time for one or two questions more or? One more question and then I think I have to depart. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Sukaha Mataji, I saw your hand raised. If you would like to ask your questions, we may let you. Or... Actually, if suppose some other devotee wants to ask questions, I would rather do that because we see Guru Maharaj and I will ask later on. Thank you, Prabhupada. Okay. And Thank Hare you. Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to your lotus feet. Hare Krishna, Sutava, Hare Krishna. Ma Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have a question, Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, my question is generally, we see in the previous ages, the demons performed penances and austerities for a longer time to get powers and uh, mystic uh, perfections. And like Hrenyakashipu or Ravana, many such demons. In the present day, Maharaj, um, present days, the demoniac philosophers or atheistic philosophers, they don't do any such austerities or penances. Their life is also very sinful. But Maharaj, they get such a power to you know, influence so many people, sometimes thousands and sometimes millions. And uh, you know, it, it really bothers Maharaj. So I was trying to understand, how, how does that happen, Maharaj? How do they get such an influence? Well, they perform austerities too. <laughs> But their austerities in order to, to increase their influence and their power. Austerities bring power. Material austerities bring material power. Spiritual austerities awaken one's devotion to Krishna. So austerity is a neutral thing. And so a lot of them perform, they deny themselves a lot of personal uh, pleasures in order to control. You have to understand what is the main desire of a demon. It's not sex life, it's control. They enjoy and they actually relish and they are envious of others. They want to control others. They want to gain something from others. They want to push others down. They want to be in control. So it's explained that Krishna or Vishnu is the, he manifests himself as Brahma, as the creator. He manifests himself as Vishnu, as the maintainer. He manifests himself as Shiva, as the destroyer. So the demons, they want to become Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, but they can't become Brahma. They can become Vishnu, they want to become like Vishnu and Shiva. We'll control you, and if you don't let us control you, we'll destroy you. They, their, their happiness or their, it's not happiness, their evil mindedness is fueled by control. Now, if you understand that principle, then you're going to understand what's happening in the world. They want to control more and more and more. And therefore, they have power. I mean, I could give you statistics. I'll tell you one thing. 87% of the natural resources in the world are owned by three corporations in the world. And these corporations are controlling many other smaller corporations. I won't mention the names because I don't think this is the proper place. But this is what's happening. 
You can't buy gold anymore. The demons have hoarded the gold. The silver markets closed also practically. Yeah. So control, control, control. <laughs> but Krishna is the supreme controller, and therefore we take shelter of Krishna, we get controlled by Krishna. That's all. <laughs> and ultimately, Krishna has a plan to destroy the demons. But like, just like when Haranyakashipu was harassing Prahlad Maharaj, Rama prayed to the Lord to come. The Lord said, I will come in due course of time. When he harasses my pure devotee, then I will take action. The Lord, the Lord acts according to his own timetable. He knows what's best. There's an old saying, it's a saying in the uh, Christian tradition, time and truth go hand in hand. In, tr in time, truth will prevail. But right now, we're in a pretty dark time, and it's just the way it is in Kali Yuga. But Lord Chaitanya's movement will eventually surface and pervade the entire world. And Prabhupada said, if you don't do it, if he said, he said to us, if you don't do it, then your children's children will do it. The third generation of Krishna consciousness, he said, they will do it. That's what Prabhupada said. <laughs> and that's the ones that are just growing up right now. <laughs> So we need to uh, support these younger generations and because they're not influenced so much by the, our bad qualities. <laughs> okay, I'll stop here. I do have an appointment and that I'm a little bit late for. Yes, so I should stop. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Take shelter of Krishna's holy name and associate with each other as much as possible. Have programs in Krishna consciousness and you'll be always happy and free from the anxiety that is so much a part of this material world. Maharaj, thank you so much, Maharaj. We are very, very grateful for your presence, for your wonderful class and very convincing answers, Maharaj. We look forward to hear from you more and more. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Kadamba Kanana Prabhu.